Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. So another typical physics one exam problem. We got a guy pulling on a rope or string with a tension force of 100 newtons. He's holding it at an angle 30 degrees above the horizontal, the center of the box, right? And we have a new thing for this problem because I have a similar problem in, the, in another video, but for this one, now we're given that mu K kinetic is equal to 0 0.5. So the friction here between the box and the floor is is now 0 0.5. So it wasn't hard, hard, as it, hard as it is to speak. It wasn't a hard already to pull the box. Now there's friction he's got to deal with. And this is the amount. All right, so now let's start. So these are the given values, right? Force or tension and then the angle. So let's separate this, okay? First thing you wanna do when you have forces, free body diagram, all right? Can't stress that enough. If you do that, then you're like halfway there because that should trigger a lot of things that you need to do for the next parts. Okay, so we, need, we wanna find, and that would be great too. What do we wanna find? So we wanna find the value for the normal. So what is the normal value, the number? And we want to find kinetic friction uh, value. Perfect. So when I see that, right, immediately I wanna write down a formula just so I don't forget. And I'm gonna write it over here. So if I see that they want friction, kinetic friction, I know that kinetic friction is equal to mu k, which is what we have, times the normal. Okay, and they're asking for normal, so it's gonna be good. So let's start with the free body diagram. All right, so free body diagram, we have, let's put the box right there. Okay, and let's see. Immediately, you always wanna choose mass times gravity, okay? It's my go-to. Next, the easiest one, you know, it's gonna be normal. It's always perpendicular to the, the surface. So those two out of the way. Now, we got a couple things. First, let's, uh, let's draw a little dotted line here so we could see that here is where the floor is. Okay, and this box, let's bring it down a little bit. Okay, flat on the floor. Okay, so let's, let's, um, let's realize something. If the box is moving in this direction, right, friction is obviously in the opposite direction. It's trying to slow it down. So we're gonna put this line here for friction kinetic, all right? So we got the easy ones down. Now, the more complicated part, which is here, which, which is not really complicated, but is the part that gives people the trouble. So I'm gonna put a dotted line, and then I'm gonna put the, I'm just gonna put it as an arrow, but really it's a rope. So it's gonna be tension from his shoulder to the edge of the box, this little piece. And that's going to be 100 newtons. But we got a lot of tension right there. That's the value that's represented from here to here. And we got 30 degrees. Okay. We can't do anything with a value that is diagonal, right? Because when we do our sum of forces, we're going to do sum of x and sum of y. All right. So if we look at this system, um, this is gonna be positive x, right? This is gonna be negative x. Up is gonna be positive y, and then down is gonna be negative y, okay? 
I choose it to be like that. So now we need to break up this diagonal uh, component, which is a uh, tension, into two components that are not diagonal that we can work with. One is here, right, in the X. So I'm gonna write um, force in the X direction equals, and then we're gonna break it up into this other component here, which is the FY component. So now this component no longer exists. This little squiggly line here means that I no longer have this tension force because now I broke it up into this direction and this direction. So these two things explain this one or what once was. Now let's fill in the values here. We got, this is the hypotenuse, right? So we got adjacent over hypotenuse. So we got 100 cosine of 30. And here is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So 100 sine of 30. Okay, so now this one no longer exists because we are explaining it in these two vectors now. Everything is now in X and Y direction. All right, so now we can move forward. So the next part, the sum of forces. So whenever you see something that, you know, you, you have to break up into components and you see there's tension or you see there's, you know, forces, think sum of forces, all right? You think that F equals MA, the sum of forces equals MA, and also um, know that you can't have anything diagonal, that you have to break it up into components. So we're gonna do the force in the X direction first. So what are we gonna get? We got 100 cosine of 30, which is this one right here, the positive direction. So I'm gonna write 100 cosine of 30. And we got friction opposing the motion in the negative direction. Negative friction equals MA. All right, so F is all of this, right? The two forces that are acting on the box equals MA. So let's, um, let's leave it there for now. Okay, and then let's do the sum of forces in the Y. We got these two forces, and this is another part that a lot of students mess up on. You broke this one into two components, an X and a Y. So don't forget that you have this Y component here also. So now you have three things. You have the normal, you have MG, which are both in the Y direction, and you also have this. So the normal is positive because it's going up. This one here is positive, so it's going to be plus 100 sine of 30. And we got negative MG because it's in the downward direction below the horizontal. All of that is equal to zero. All right, so let me stop and just explain a little bit. First of all, a lot of people miss this vector here when adding it to this one and this one, because this is normally what you would just do. You know, normal is equal to mg. The box isn't moving up and down, but in this case it is because the guy is actually pulling at it at an angle. So this little corner might actually be a little bit lifted up and he's only dragging this side of it, which is less friction. And if the box is light enough, it's probably better to drag a little bit of friction instead of the whole box touching the surface. So he probably is lifting it up a little bit. And that's what this vector here is doing. So this box is no longer just like dragged flat. It's actually probably lifted a little bit. The boy here behind the gym and he's pulling on this thing. So now the forces in the X equal MA and the forces in the Y, we have to consider this one, right? And it's equal to zero. Okay, so there's nothing happening in the Y. That's what the zero means, right? We can assume that he's lifting it up and he's maybe whatever, but that's not really the case, 
right? This could explain that. But if this and this are equal to mg, then nothing is happening. Yeah, I mean, we don't know these values yet. So this y is gonna be zero. Just think that if something is being dragged on the floor, one of these two has to be zero because there's motion in one direction, but there's no motion in the other direction if something is sitting flat on the floor. Okay, so that's why this is zero. So a lot of people miss this part and the zero. Let's not do that. Now let's move on to the next part. We got, I'm gonna label this, the FX part one, right? Let me, I'll probably just do this real quick. And then two for all of this. Okay, so now we move on to the next part. It's clear that I wanna solve for N. Okay, so let's look at both and see what we can do. Perfect. We got N here and we can just move things over. So let's do that. So let's take two. Take two and solve for N. So I'm gonna put this on the other side of the equal sign, which is a plus, and then here is gonna be a minus. So N is gonna equal mg positive because it moved over and this is negative now 100 sine of 30 all right we have everything we need we have the mass or do we not have the mass oh okay sorry the mass was given to us i forgot to write it down like an idiot dumb me 20 kilograms okay so yeah, that's my fault. I'm stupid. All right, so we have the mass. We have gravity. We know gravity. 100 and sine of 30. Perfect. So now let's um, plug in all the values here. Put it in your calculator. And you should get 146 newtons. This N is not normal. I'm going to just write newtons. Okay, so... So we have there, and let's let's not even put this. I'm just gonna put 146. I don't want to confuse with units and all that stuff. I haven't been writing units, so I'm not gonna write units. Okay, so I'm not gonna write anything. I'm just gonna put 146. Okay, that's the normal. So we got one of the things that we needed, and this is perfect because now the normal is what we need for the friction force, which is what we're being asked to find, and we're already given the coefficient of friction, which is 0.5, and it should always be under one. Okay, and that's in blue, let's do blue. For the last part, we're gonna use friction is equal to mu k n, right, friction kinetic, mu is 0 0.5 and n is 146. Okay, putting that into calculator, 73. And that we can put Newtons, right? Because force, force is usually measured in Newtons. So for that one, I'll put that and we found this one. Okay, so two things to remember, maybe, maybe other things. Write down your givens. You see me make a mistake and not apply this you know if i read back the question i'll see it again but write your given things also when you break it up into components right try to try to you know pause and think are these two the only components in the y or are these two the only components in the x all right then when you do the sum of forces if you want stop there on each one box it up and then see what you can do with them should I use this one? Should I use that one? Should I plug one of the things from here and there? You know, there's a there's a bunch of ways they're gonna try to, you know, get you with the with this kind of stuff. And so then finally, once you find the normal, it's easy because we know the formula for friction, the coefficient was given, and we just plug stuff in. All right. So hopefully it was helpful. 
and this continuous series.